When you work at a startup, your goal is to do more with less by adding value and helping the product grow with less staff, realistic spending plans, and limited resources. Startups are chaotic by their very nature, but at any given time, only a few things really matter. Being lean means cutting down on waste and focusing on the right things at the right times. The minimal viable product is one of the most important parts of the lean method, MVP. If you understand the MVP idea, you can save time and spend more time on the things that matter most. What is a minimal viable product, or MVP? Frank Robinson, the co-founder and president of SyncDev, came up with the term minimum viable product in 2001. MVP. He calls working on both the product and the client at the same time synchronous development. This is how an MVP is made. Frank Robinson's minimum viable product, MVP, definition says that teams will sometimes say things like, we added 800 new features. Problem. Even some people are proud of their feature count. Adding features doesn't always make the business case better, though. It might be riskier, take longer, and produce less useful results. The minimum viable product is the right size for your business and your customers. It's big enough to get people to use it, be happy with it, and buy it, but not big enough to be dangerous and bloated. It's the product with the highest return on investment, ROI, divided by the risk. Instead of getting feature requests from all customers, the MVP is determined by how important features are to your most important customers in terms of revenue. Minimum Viable Product – How It Works from Frank Robinson The minimum viable product, MVP, is the best way to balance risk and return on investment, ROI, which is strongly linked to effort and time to market. Robinson shows MVP with the help of a grid. On the vertical axis, risk or effort is plotted against ROI, which is on the horizontal axis. Robinson says that the MVP is more than just choosing the features of a product that will give the best return on investment. It is also a way for the management and development teams to think. It says to think big and small at the same time. Think big enough that your first product can be a solid foundation for your next products, their next generation, and your roadmap, but not so big that your competitors can beat you. Eric Rees' Definition of Minimum Viable Product MVP. Eric Rise helped spread the idea of the MVP. In his book, The Lean Startup, Rees used the idea of the MVP to show how important it is to learn during the product development process. The minimal viable product is the version of a new product that lets a team get the most customer feedback with the least amount of work. With a minimum viable product, product managers can quickly begin to learn. The validated learning loop, Build Measure Learn, can be finished in the least amount of time and with the least amount of risk. Unlike a prototype, an MVP is not just used to test the design or technology. The main goal of the MVP is to test simple business model hypotheses. Minimum viable products are not always products, and they can be of different types and have different levels of complexity. MVPs could be anything from simple smoke tests, like sending people to a landing page, to working prototypes, often with missing features and bugs. Why is it important to make MVPs? The MVP's main goal is to save as much time and effort as possible by testing how the market reacts to your idea before building the whole product. MVPs can help the work of product managers. Use real-world data to test product idea theories. Cut down on the time it takes to get new features out on the market. Give your early adopters value quickly. The MVP is the fastest way to give your first customers the most value while also learning from them. Test your product slash market fit before making a full product. Get reliable information about how users act so you can use it to guide future product development and how you go to market. MVPs can be a key part of your product prioritization process and help you make decisions based on data. Grow the number of users before the launch. Getting rid of trash keeps you from wasting time and money on things that don't matter. Minimum viable product examples from the top eight companies. Let's use a few examples from the most successful eight companies to show how MVPs work in the real world. Facebook. It's hard to understand how powerful social media can be, 
Facebook used to be a website for Harvard University students to connect with each other. The Facebook, as it was known back then, was a simple site that let students in the same classrooms connect with each other by posting messages to shared boards. Zuckerberg was able to prove his idea and reach critical mass by showing Facebook to a surprisingly small part of the market. This led to the social media network's popularity skyrocketing in the long run. Everyone knows how the story turns out. Uber When Uber, then called Uber Cab, started in 2009, you could only use it on an iPhone or by sending an SMS, and it was only available in San Francisco. Uber's MVP was enough to show that the idea of a low-cost ride-sharing business could work. Validated data and lessons learned from the first app helped Uber quickly grow to where it is now. At the moment, Uber has a global market capitalization of more than $68 billion and works in close to 80 countries. Angelist Babak Nivi and Naval Ravikant used the concierge MVP to start Angelist in January 2010. When you think about Angelist now, you might picture a large database of companies and investors that is supported by sophisticated matching algorithms and search tools. When you take away everything else and put a person in its place, what's left is the original Angelist. In the early days of Angelist, Babak and Naval used their large network of contacts to put entrepreneurs in touch with investors. They didn't make their first website until they thought their idea had potential. Buffer One of the most popular social media scheduling apps available today is Buffer. The MVP for Dropbox was created by the company's founder, Joel Gascoigne. Nevertheless, the smoke test was a simple landing page rather than a movie. The Buffer MVP appeared as follows. In the words of Joel, the aim of this two-page MVP was to check whether people would even consider using the app. I simply tweeted the link and asked people what they thought of the idea. After a few people used it to give me their email and I got some useful feedback via email and Twitter, I considered it validated. In the words of Eric Race, I had my first validated learning about customers. It was time to gain a little more validated learning. A step-by-step -step plan for putting together MVP. Using one of the many available frameworks, you can find your MVP and test your product hypothesis. In his book, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Client Growth, Patrick Vlaskovitz lays out a five-step plan for getting more clients. Here are the steps in the procedure. Create an ecological map. Set out the value proposition for each stakeholder. Give one more MVP. Find out what the biggest risk is. Make a value path. Let's talk about each step. Step 1. Draw a picture of your surroundings. The map of your business ecosystem is a diagram that shows how all of the people who will use your product will interact with each other. You might have more than one type of user who uses the product. Each stakeholder should be shown by a box or circle. This includes users, customers, partners, media outlets, your customers' customers, and other groups. Then, write down the benefits that people will get from using your product. Don't forget that value can also be vague. Using the money that the customers of your customers send you as an example. Third, make rules about who pays who. Describe how your product is sold, including the marketing and sales channels you use to reach customers. As an example, Flaskoftis talks about the company Hopped Up PB, which sells peanut butter. The peanut butter is likely to be sold directly to customers through their website and health food stores. This is how the Hopped Up PB ecosystem map looks. Step 2. Figure out what's in it for each stakeholder. What are the most important benefits for each player in an ecosystem, and what are they willing to give up in exchange? What are the biggest problems your users have, and where can you help them the most? Chris Silligot from ClearBridge says that this map is a pain and gain one. Examples. Sales go up, which makes people happy. Advertisers can reach a large number of people who are interested in their products. The partners in the channel will save money and spend less on getting new customers. The end user has more time to spend with his or her family. Step 3. Choose the best MVP. According to Vlaskovitz, the final MVP is test the business model's hypotheses, while the intermediate MVP is test its high-risk parts. 
When you choose your final MVP, think about the most important parts of the product you need to give each stakeholder in order to get the results you envisioned in the previous stage. Describe the MVP in its best form. In this stage, you must also say what the user pays to use the MVP and how you measure its viability or what your success criteria are. Step 4. Figure out what the biggest risks are. Outline and rank the risks of the business model from greatest to least so that you can check key assumptions. The goal of this exercise is to find possible bottlenecks and failure points ahead of time. By doing this, you lower the chances of failing and losing a lot of money before you have a finished product. Flaskovit says that the risks should be put in a table with the type of risk, the stakeholder who should test it, any dependencies, and the way to test it. Step 5. Plan out what your value path will look like. In the last stage of the process, you will map out the value path, or customer discovery journey, that leads from where you are now to your final MVP. From the table you made in the first step, make a list of the basic assumptions you need to test for each risk. Most likely, you'll need to test your assumptions using a combination of customer development interviews, prototypes, and product features. The value chain for our made-up peanut butter product might look something like this. The value path is made up of different MVPs that test important premises. The first assumption to be shown wrong is that there is a market for high-energy peanut butter. This can be done by making a simple landing page and keeping track of how many times the buy button is clicked. If the assumption is true, the next goal is to show that the peanut butter tastes great. To test this theory, one could give away free samples at grocery stores. If everything goes as planned, you can start thinking about the jar and the brand label for the finished product.